Hey, this is Scott of Sharky, Bonsai.com. Today I'm going to talk about the Nikon D7000. It's a mid-level camera in Nikon's lineup. It has an APS-C size sensor, but it still has a lot of the semi-professional controls and functionality inside. 16 megapixel APS-C size sensor. It's a similar or same one to the K5, Hitex K5. Really nice sensor inside, high dynamic range. It does have six frames a second burst rate on the camera. Nice autofocus system, 39 points, and then you've got nine cross type sensors in the middle of the grouping. So it's a really good camera for pretty much any type of any style of photography, from action to still life and all that. ISO range 100 to 25,600, it's a nice big range. I always prefer to see lower than ISO 100, but in this case it does not have that. 1 8,000th of a second maximum shutter speed, and 1 250th of a second maximum flashing speed, which is in line with professional, semi-professional cameras. It does have a 100% viewfinder, 100% coverage, I mean, and it is a pent prism, so that means it's a little brighter better than the mirrored versions of the cheaper cameras. Fully weather resistant. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best out there in other cameras of this you know, semi-professional range. What I don't like about this and the D600, which I didn't mention in the review of that, is the battery door. It seems kind of flimsy. It does have a seal right here, but if you look down here, there is a rubber piece that easily comes open. So that seems like a flaw in my opinion if water were to get in there as you're shooting. But besides that it's a solid camera. It does have some magnesium alloy but there is a lot of plastic as well. Should be good enough for most situations. Video is decent. It has 1080p but it's at only 24 frames a second. However if you go to 720p you'll get the 30 frames a second and 24. So not the best camera for video, but it does have the mic port. So I'm going to go into some details up close on the camera, give you an overview of how it works and all that. So on the side here is the main difference of this camera and the D600 from other Nikons that are more advanced. Usually they have ISO up top, you hold that down and then you use the dials, but in this case, ISO is down here, you hold that button down, and then you can cycle with the dial on the back. Maybe it's a little bit more inconvenient, it really depends on your style. Same thing with white balance and quality. However, with things like quality, you have two functions here. One changes the quality level of the image, and one changes the size. And over here, it does not have an AF button. Again, with the more advanced Nikons, they have a second button here to let you use autofocus with that button. You can change the function of this to mimic that. On here is the live view control. I actually prefer the D600 now that I have that. In this case, you just pull that uh, switch back and it turns on live view. Both the D7000 here and the 600 are not that great with live view, but they're good enough. So if you want to run a video, you just press this button in the center and it starts recording. As I mentioned before, this camera does not have a 1080p with 30 frames a second or faster. It only goes to 24 frames a second. And 720p is only up to 30 frames a second. So it is a bit older camera. Down here is the switch to lock your focus points. I usually use a center point and leave it locked to that. It does have two dials, which you know you is expected in this level of camera. Definitely helpful in situations where you want to control aperture and shutter speed at the same time. Up top, metering, pretty simple. You just have to know what the symbols mean. And then again, again with the exposure compensation. Most buttons work the same or similar in how they function. On the side here, you've got your different ports, AV out, HDMI, that's USB actually, but I think it's multiple functions. In the bottom, you've got your mic port, and then one for 
external shutter release or GPS or something like that. There is no button to lock down the dial, so you could potentially move this in your accidentally, but it's pretty firm. Let's say it's unlikely that'll happen. So U1 and U2 are the user modes for this style of camera. Same thing with the D600 again. I like this layout, it's simple, and two user modes, usually good enough for most situations I have. U1 set to full manual for flash use, and I have U2 set to a custom aperture priority mode. It saves all the settings, pretty much everything you would want in the camera. It does have scene modes and things, but I don't use those. And then down a little bit more, here is a button you hold down to cycle this grouping here. So S is single shot, and then you've got your two continuous modes, 6 frames a second maximum, and the quiet mode, which I'm going to demonstrate because I found it interesting with Nikon. I was using Pentax for a long time. First I'll put it into standard single shot mode, and you can hear the full smack of the shutter and mirror and you put it into quiet mode and you let the button down you get those two distinct sounds so it is a bit quieter and it has a few more like mirror lockup and timed and also the remote it does have an info button I don't use that often but good for tripod use autofocus manual switch and then there's a button you hold down like most of these buttons and you can see this layout changes you can cycle through uh, single autofocus continuous and automatic and then you can also cycle the points there are a few more buttons bracket button you'll be able to hold that button down again and then do a bracket of one two three I think it goes up to and then the flash that's the dedicated button for flash. You can also control compensation when the flash is up. One thing I do like about the Nikons, especially this range, is the two SD card slots. That gives you a lot of options with backup and control of how, where you want to put image files. You can copy files to the second card. Really nice. It's a great feature of these cameras does have a few extra buttons for custom. There's a custom button here and then one down here. Initially set to um, aperture preview or depth of field preview. So you can see the aperture change when you hold that down. So that's about it of the external on the camera. I'm going to go into some details on the menu here. First off you have the my menu section where you can add items that you want quick access to. Another extra feature is that in the top My Menu item, you can set that to the button. I have this set to the front button, and I press that right here, and see the ISO comes up, which is a nice quick access method. Go down here is a retouch menu. I personally don't use this that often or at all because I use I shoot in raw most of the time. Setup menu, lots of things you can format your card easily. You can also do mirror lockup, which is good for cleaning your sensor of course, but make sure your battery is fully charged. If you see that grayed out, that means you should charge your battery and then try it again. It's also nice to have the copyright information on here. I always set that and it just embeds some extra data into your image files. This camera, of course, also has a lot of custom settings, similar to more advanced cameras. A ton of different controls. This is very similar to the D600 that I also use, but not quite, not as many options in this case. It is a little bit older camera and also doesn't have all of the features of a full frame. You can set a lot of different settings and then you can use the U1, U2 
custom settings to save that and then you'll have a full mode dedicated to what you shoot as and one of the main ones the shooting menu you can define your memory cards to what I do here is I put my JPEGs on the second card and that allows me to have a nice backup just in case one of the memory cards goes bad as I mentioned previously I didn't put this in the T600 view but it's the same exact setup I don't really like the battery door it seems kind of flimsy-ish does have a seal but this is the main thing here is, is this little gasket that's used for the external power source if you buy that as an add-on I guess this, this is how the cord comes out but I can easily open this thing accidentally if I'm using the camera if I if it were raining outside you know that seems like a bad a potential entry point for water I was thinking about actually gluing those but uh, kinda strange they're set up like that I've been shooting with it even before the D600 had this for at least a few months before that picked this up from a friend used good price currently these still go new for around nine hundred dollars online I still think that's a reasonable price for these image quality is great because it does have that uh, high performance sensor inside so Nikon D7000 things <laughs>